so math-intensive. I feel like I don't know. Eventually, it'll be very useful. So um, the way this is going to work out is that we have we have ten presenters, and it's going to take. Well, actually, we have uh, nine presenters. We're going to take roughly uh, no more than ten minutes per uh, group to present, and they're going to pitch their ideas uh, and <coughs> essentially um, specify what they're looking for in the audience out here. So if you're an artist, you know, pay attention to what groups might be looking for an artist. If you're a programmer that looks that's looking to attach themselves to a team, you can try to find a team that needs some programming talent. Um, our first presenter will be uh, Tree, and he's going to tell us all about his game. Uh, whenever you're ready. All right. All right. Uh, hello, guys. My name is Tree. Uh, I'm a fifth year from the University of California, Irvine, and uh, my ambitious title is called The Secret War. All right. Try Spacebar. Uh, so, The Secret War is pretty much. Um, concept that I kind of developed um, pretty much a few months ago. It would be a fusion between Metal Slug and uh, a little bit of Call of Duty in terms of the kill streaks. So it specializes in kill streak. No idea. Uh, <laughs> specializes in kill streaks in the manner where instead of Metal Slug dying in one hit, you would actually have a health bar. <coughs> and of course, there's going to be a variety of weapons. And um, if you get hit at any point, it destroys your kill streak you don't get your reinforcements or whatever your next kill streak is going to be. So like, for um, example, kill streak 15, <coughs> make home strike, you know, uh, kill streak 1, um, detect enemies where they are. Like, kind of, like that kind of simple concept, pretty much. And um, um, pretty much uh, the game was, um, it's a historical game because it is based off a war not a lot of people know about. Because if they did, the Vietnam War would have ended probably in five years instead of ten. Um, is pretty much um, dedicated to this general. His name is um, Mok Tao. And um, pretty much that's the protagonist. Like, you can animate him as much as you want. I'll try to find as many images of him as possible. Try to like re-envision him as 
this heroic figure. Um, I'm pretty much dedicating it since he died like about a year and a half ago. So, you know, just to get his name out there, pretty much. And um, pretty much uh, I pitched this idea originally at the Game uh, Legend competition. It was judged by, I believe, seven judges, um, many of which, some of them were like, as you all know, Blizzard, the lead designer of Blizzard was there, uh, Wake Ward was there. Some of my other images are missing, but there were armor games, and uh, they pretty much gave me third place because they saw potential in my idea. And also, um, I know one or two of the judges from um, the, the first annual game, say, competition. He was also one of the judges. He really liked this idea. He would love to see this idea into fruition pretty much by the second annual. So that's my goal, pretty much. And um, yeah, this is the image of them. So the guy on um, second to last on the left, he's the lead designer of Blizzard. Um, this guy right here, he was one of the judges at the annual game state competition. He really loved my idea because he's a really old school game kind of guy. The hardest judge was probably Justin Lloyd. He was kind of like the American Idol equivalent of that evil judge, Simon, <laughs> yeah, whatever his name is. Yeah, it was really harsh. Like I heard, like people came out crying because of his criticism. So pretty much, yeah. And Armor game is to the far right, and yeah, pretty much they really like my idea. Like I really like love my concept. I would really appreciate if I could get a team together. So far I got about three members, one programmer, one artist, and myself. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Any questions? What steps are you looking for uh, as far as you looking for more programmers? Or oh, um, programmer, artist. Uh, in terms of design, um, I'm, if there's a few designers here, and the, the design will pretty much, it's pretty self-explanatory. Each campaign will be based off a real mission that occurred that he was in, what, whether it was like an operation saving people from a helicopter that went down or things like that, like, like real operations, pretty much, raise awareness of those operations. And uh, yeah, oh yeah. Um, oh, what kind of art style are you looking for for your art? 2D, 2D pixelated, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, as long as it's fun, um, then I'm settled with it. Yeah. Well, where, where is it? Hmm? It's pixelated, as in how many bits? Bits, um, I would as like I like if you saw the metal slug, just a little bit enhanced. I don't even need it to be three D. Just like a little bit enhanced on that. So yeah, very fast paced, very just straightforward. Go through the game, beat the boss, go to the next mission, get different guns. Yeah. Yeah. How far along is the game now? If we have three people working on it. Um, so far it has not been in any form of creation because um, I'm also involved in a lot of projects myself. I'm in a game jam this coming week. I'm all, I, and last year I was just in a lot of game projects also, but I really want to dedicate a lot of my time and resource on this one, yeah, for the next annual competition, yeah. Oh, and if you guys are curious, the design engine, I was thinking of using Tile, but programmers who are very experienced in programming design engines, be my guest, you know. Programming your design engine will be a very strong part of your portfolio if you design your entire engine. Yeah. Any other questions? Let's say no other questions. Let's thank Pete. Yeah. Phrase of Ghost Hearts is it is the fate of all ghosts to die in their original bodies. So you start you start the game off in this dark area, and the game progresses you towards um, towards your body, though you do not know this yet. It is not until you um, until you possess the body of a priest that you realize that you can escape the, the, that you realize that you have a fate that is to die in your original body, and that you are able to avoid it. Um, type, the type of gameplay is inspired by Majora's Mask. It is somewhat, uh, it is somewhat open world. So you possess people, uh, you get a snippet of their lives like, oh, um, 
oh, I wonder what time I'll have for dinner tomorrow, or I think that girl over there is really cute. And uh, if they have a really strong will, then a little bit later on they'll, uh, they'll come back and try to haunt you, they'll try to repossess your body, they'll try to um, help you along if they, if they think that you have a good conviction. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a ghost. It, the, the idea is that there's a ghost in the human world who has, who tries to mingle in the affairs of humans. The type of art that I'm looking for is a 2D top down. Because it is from a ghost perspective, I want it to be a little bit surreal. So if you're going to make a, um, if I want an artist to, to make a room like, oh, we're going to make this classroom. I want to make it identifiably a classroom, but also surreal. So we might have walls that are, you know, kind of wavy, or colors that are unfamiliar. Like instead of beige, we might have, I don't know, rainbow. Um, the type of artists I want to look for are people who would say, you know, this might be, uh, you know, you have this idea of uh, of ghosts possessing people. So why don't we, you know, increase the contrast of people you can possess? So that attracts the player's eyes towards that person. Those are the type of artists I want. You can amplify the gameplay experience using what they've learned in college. Any questions? So it's a 2D top down. 2D top down. That'd be like a 8-bit style. Just a little bit. It depends on the artist's style, but. Uh, I've, a, I've actually created some procedural, procedurally generated graphics, so it'd have to match the style of that. Um, so if you look at you know, something like Asteroids, um, everything there is procedurally generated, the asteroids, the ship itself. However, um, in my game, that I've already created, I've made it so that the, uh, that the individual people are textured, but it's like very, very simple textures like, um, like polka dots or stripes. So I'm looking, so the artist I want, you know, if they make a torso from a top-down perspective and a separate leg that's, a uh, separate leg that's, you know, that would animate walking, or some, uh, it, a lot of the artists that I'm, get, that I'm hearing is, you know, you know, what type of art I'm looking for? Um, if, it's, if it's 2D, then I think the programmer would be okay with pretty much anything until, um, until it fits the image. Um, our, there's a, there's this person I look up to. He's called um, he's known on the internet as a Yahtzee Cross uh, Crosshow, who makes uh, zero punctuation. He says uh, he has this complaint about games how there's a huge um, how a lot of games they are story driven, but you know, they make it they make cutscenes, and you know the story is uh, the story is driven by cutscenes. I really don't like this. So it, it is story driven. So, but it's going to be very, very, um, very, very minimal. Like a, after the person takes control of the priest, the priest gives him the two options. So he can either go in the same direction, proceed and die in his own body, or he can go backwards. He can avert his own fate and help the priest, um, or help the priest with his own personal needs. And like the text would probably be only like in, if you if you play any metal metal, metal gear game. The cutscenes are 10 minutes long, <coughs> whereas in my game I want it to be like, you know, it's going to be a snippet of the text, very minimal. Does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. <coughs> are there any other questions? If there's thank no you. other questions, let's thank Danny. It's a very simple game, you should be able to be able to see it on the laptop though. So. Do you want to open it or you got it? Put this on this, this to the side as my wife can talk about it. Also, you might want to uh, grab the microphone. Okay, well, I was going to talk over here, I can just show it over here, so that wouldn't be in front of it and so forth. Hi there, my name is Daniel Lyons. Uh, Programmer at Cal State University Fullerton. And um, what I'm, my game is actually part pitch, part let's keep going. Um, this was the game I submitted last to the last IEEE intercollegiate long name game competition. Um, it is a 2D competitive puzzle fighting game. <laughs> and I know that sounds like a, like quite a, quite a mouthful, but I'll just let it go at the start. Um, basically, it's, it's the way I think about gaming, I really remember the old, the old style 
playing in the same room aspect of gaming. You know, MMOs are really big right now. Online gaming has taken off in a way everybody expected when they saw it. You know, how big it got. World of Warcraft, EverQuest, can go all the way back. Um, this, what I, what I want to do is make games back where two people can play in their house, on their Xbox or whatever, next to each other and have a good time. Uh, and this is, this is one of those games. It's a puzzle game, very simple to learn. Um, I, you can look at this later. I, as I said, it's quite big in the, the correct connections. Mm -hmm. It's a simple puzzle game uh, about color matching. Uh, if you hit the same color, you switch colors. If uh, you switch different color, you switch colors. If you hit the same color, they'll disappear. And chain reactions happen, all sorts of things you would expect in a puzzle game. I'm going to let that go so it's going to lose. Don't worry. Because <laughs> uh, I need to speak. But at the, at the same time, and of course this is a very barren version, which I didn't quite make any... Uh, I mean, heads turned at the last contest was because we're still we're still getting art into it, still just just getting started to get it off the ground. Um, you, two characters are actually going to be fighting while you play this puzzle game. As you can see here, I have a very simple set of powers that each that each uh, character you may able to choose your character just like in a fighting game, like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Uh, name pick your uh, name your best pick there, and you'll have your powers that will either help your board or hinder the opponent's board at the same time. And it's something that I wanted to do to really get that feeling of you know, if you stun your opponent and he's right next to you, you know, you get that feeling of like, oh, I can't believe you stunned me, you know, back and forth. The actual competitive aspect of having someone right next to you and, and playing with you. And that's what, that's the main goal of this game. It doesn't necessarily have a story, although it will have a good fiction to it. But the, the draw comes from playing one more time with your friends. Let's see who wins this time. You know, let's, let's play this versus game and see who wins. Um, so, on to, on to what I need. As you can tell, it's very, very bare bones. Um, the engine is actually completely from scratch, except for um, C++, and I'm using the DirectX uh, library, as well as C++, so this isn't Unity or Unreal or anything. Um, uh, when my professor told me uh, we were doing the game competition, and it was due in, I think, three months from the time he told us, or th two and a half months, um, I just started working, and then that, uh, that spring break, I didn't really go anywhere. I just kind of programmed a, a 2D engine off what I learned at the time. And I turned this in, and it worked, but as you can see, you know, it wasn't enough to turn heads at that competition. So what I'm looking for is, obviously, um, a, a good 2D artist, um, someone who also can do character design. As you see, many characters need to be drawn. Um, a friend of mine uh, named Emily Shang, she quickly drew these up for me so I'd have something to present. As you can see here, we have a sort of a spooky ghost and a noble princess, just to have that evil good kind of contrast to show people, you know, obviously who would be fighting. But um, in the true game, there would be two characters here fighting with animations, although we wouldn't be moving, you wouldn't be controlling these characters, you're controlling the puzzle game. That's the main aspect, is use the puzzle game with your mind and then quickly try to mess up your opponent um, with your with your powers. And it extends as well, there's supposed to be a power bar as well, but like I said, I was I was programming this uh, on the day it was due, uh, until about, I think, early afternoon, 12, 1 o'clock, until I finally just, I thought I'd just put it in and say, all right, I can't put any more in. Um, so I didn't quite, uh, there's a lot, a lot more features that I have all in the design docs um, in the same computer that are waiting to add characters, their abilities, multiple different ability sets. You can um, get the sort of character loyalty a lot of people have in fighting games where, you know, I really, really like this character and everybody says that character sucks, but if I just play them enough and play them enough, you know, I'll be able to do good with them and really, you know, feel that character life. You know, I, really, I really love playing as the ghost character even though people say he's bad, but when I do good with them, it feels good, so. Um, so again, to reiterate, what I'm looking for is a 2D artist, um, definitely someone who can do character design as well. Any other 2D artists who know um, landscape design for backgrounds um, to also enhance the fiction so we can figure out um, what kind of world this game exists in right now. I'm more mentally in a state of trying to make the game fun. That is my, uh, my peak goal. So I haven't really thought too much about the fiction. So definitely uh, artists who want to bring a world to life, uh, I would definitely appreciate um, input from that field. Also, if any other programmers are interested, it's very time consuming and in a way hard to do an entire engine by myself. So I would love any, any programmers who are interested in engine design, um, specifically 2D, 2D, this game is not gonna go beyond that, not because I wanna add work, because I wanna just keep it there. Um, you're also welcome uh, to join my project if you're interested in 2D uh, engine design, um, animation systems, all sorts of things. This is an, uh, an old version of the game. I said this is the actual version I submitted to the, uh, the last game save. Um, my new engine is still still in the works. The game's barely running, but there's now gravity. The blobs fall smoothly with, uh, with the velocity acceleration, that sort of thing. Um, that's all starting to come together. So as you can see, they very, they move very statically right now. That's no longer the case. We're making strides on that. So mm -hmm. any programmers who are interested in engine programming, I also would appreciate your help as well. Um, so one last so that's on the last thing, uh, 2D artist and programmers is what I'm looking for. So any questions? Questions? Uh, right now, though, the
title isn't too important. There's something silly. I have blobvation because there are blobs invading the center of the board. <laughs> uh, the title, you know, rules by any other name, so to speak. But right now, the title isn't the key to the game. So, um, so how do you? Sorry, do you think? Oh, it doesn't matter. How do you interact with the? Yeah, it's so like I said. I didn't have too much time. That's why I was trying to tell everybody what you need. It's a sim essentially you're you're in the middle. You have the arrow, and you shoot out. Um, and then as, as the blob, these blobs are coming in, and the whole game will actually be animated creatures, you know, magical blobs, what they're going to be. The story was supposed to be these are dangerous, but the few characters who know how, know how to handle them can harness their power. Um, if you, the basic puzzle game is very simple. If you shoot at a, a different color, you'll simply switch colors. If, I, if, if this blue were to shoot at this teal, you, you become teal, and then it would become blue. But if you shoot at the same color, it will destroy that color, and as well chain react to any color as well. So if you, see, if you were to hit this green, all of these greens would, would you know, burst and go away. And then the rest of them would fall down soon. And at that point, your arrow turns green too? Um, it, uh, no, and that well, it would still be green, because you'd have to shoot with a green uh, arrow. So. Um, so like I said, the, the puzzle game in itself um, is something to pay attention to and to play. But at the same time, since you're playing with people to promote that fighting competitive aspect, there are powers you have here. And as well, I'm going to have a, a hold feature where you can hold on to one color to use later. And if you hold it too long, it'll actually charge up and be a, a quick, quick bolt, depending on what power you have. You know, blue will be a sort of spread shot, red will be a line drive down an entire lane. So you'll have, you'll have the puzzle aspect to think about, but you'll also have to remember your opponent is trying to hurt you. Oh, and as well, when you get large chains like that, if you were to hit these four, you would send three blobs to your opponent and so forth, you know, in typical puzzle game fashion. So. Uh, you go uh, is the left side identical to the right? Um, in the puzzle game, yes, and the power is no. Because uh, I want again, I want to have that sort of character loyalty, be able to choose your style of play. That will exist within the characters. So the ghost's powers, um, I didn't use any powers to have to the mid time. Um, he has sort of, the, um, sort of the indirect approach. He can speed up you know, the speed that the blobs come up on this side, and he can also eat essentially all of his red blobs to heal himself. Um, she's more of the direct approach. She can just straight hit him with five blobs instantly, and you know, and so on, sort of abilities like that. So it's it's all it's all the character you pick, but the puzzle game itself is the same. Um, I have one more question. Sure. Is there going to be a lot of animation? Um, probably. There, there, again, there won't be movement. It will all be in the center. So if you imagine a modern game fighting game like uh, King of Fighters or Blaze Blue. Uh, oh, I'm talking about two D fighting games, of course, and Street Fighters as well. But that's a three D fighting game nowadays. Um, in, in that style, where you know it's a it's a good vectorized style of animation. We're not doing pixel art here. We're doing modern modern art. Uh, but again, they're not, they won't be moving. They'll be fighting in the, in the middle to represent your actions. Yeah. That way the puzzle game is the main focus. Any other questions? Oh. Uh, is there a general aesthetic you're looking for as far as characters are concerned? Are there specific time periods? Um, like yeah, essentially, uh, at the moment, I'm just leaning towards a typical fantasy, you know, as, as you would know it. Again, uh, I'm not a character designer myself. I, my, art, my art skill is very low. So I'm definitely looking to see, uh, like I said before, people who have worlds in mind, you know, fictions in mind, um, to come forward and maybe bounce ideas as well. Because again, you know, I, I can I can imagine how I want it to be, but I'm no good with the pen, uh, you know. So uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for any specific style outside of general fantasy, you know, not specifically elves, orcs, that kind of thing, but generally, you know, the medieval ages with the twist of magic. That
basically, so far that's my idea. I'm sorry, what was the style? Um, it's an RPG style. Oh, and MMO, MMO. yeah. So, and I'm going to be switching between first and third person mm -hmm. shooter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How far are you along in you have a set story? Mm -hmm. um, I got most of the story done, and since I'm making it, um, I'm making, I'm creating my own mythology for the story. So, um, I'm just, right, I'm almost done with most of the character histories like for each individual civilizations, but yeah, I'm flexible to them, like, so. What's he called you? Uh, I don't exactly have a name, but so far I'm just calling it Enigma, because. And what's your name? My name is Dave. So where did you say this was taking place, and um, off of that, what type of um, like environment would this be in? Um, so it's taking place um, right off the coast of Japan, but the problem, uh, the thing is, it's not based on anything. Uh, <coughs> this is where I like have complete artist freedom because uh, the, it's since it's a clash of four different civilizations uh, from out of from out of India, uh, from like out of the world. So you can mash four different kind of textures and architectures and just make up whatever you want in terms of environmental design. Like come up with four different styles for each civilization and just mash them up to like showcase buildings and uh, structures. But the two sets uh, on, the, you know, on the level that I'm creating, there's gonna be the level on top and chambers underneath. Chambers will have the architecture on top is just uh, forests and like mountains and stuff like that. So far, I just came up with this idea, so it's just me. Like, I haven't spoken to a lot of my friends about it. Uh, but I plan to be working a lot on this. So I'm not sure exactly as to how much I can get done by April, but hopefully I'll have a significant amount, or at least a good demo to show off. So, yeah. Any other questions? Lots of other questions. Hi guys, uh, my name is Brian. And I'm Matthew. And we're from Chapman. And we're from the Panther Games. It's a club in uh, Chapman that represents all the gaming programming that we do. And our game is called Math Kingdom. Unfortunately, our, one of our team members, uh, Ariane, can't make it today. But we'll continue on with the presentation. So, it's an educational game. It's pursued for kids who are struggling in math. Not necessarily targeting at an age group, but for those who want to build up their math skills. So the objective is to defeat the four main villains, facing the four operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So like I said, it's a side-scroller educational platform game, going from left to right. And it's kind of hard to see here, but these would be the villains. Um, they're the math knights, and they would have integers on them, and the equations um, the equations would be on them, and you would have to solve that by using user input. And let's say.
say the number is 10, uh, 10 plus 10, get 20, and that would defeat the knight. So the plot's about you're studying for a math test, you just give up and decide to go to sleep, and you enter Math Kingdom. And your goal is to help the villagers in the Math Kingdom defeat four villains, like I said, based on the operators, and free the, free the kingdom from the clutches of the villains. Um, these are kind of the sounds that we're going to implement in the game. Um, I have friends who are um, going to work on the sounds. So they're going to work on character damage, boss damage, arrow shots, incorrect, incorrect answers, and level complete sounds with background music. Again, it's hard to see from the, the screen over here, but you're an archer. That's one way we're going to implement gameplay to the, the uh, to shoot the arrows to the enemy. Because I was thinking of using a knight at first with a sword, but that gets kind of complicated because every swing you do, based on your uh, character input, could be too tedious. And I feel like shooting an arrow would be better game mechanics. And here are the villains. Um, the addition of that looks like a little wizard. So he has addition signs all over him. You have to solve problem. Subtraction serpents. I know it's kind of corny, but uh, <laughs> he's wearing a robe, and it looks like he. Uh, you subtracted his arms from him. So that's why he's the subtraction circuits. And the next one is the multiplication magician. So he summons a, a mass amount of armies and it just multiplies. And then if you defeat him, he summons the, it's really hard to see, the division dragon. It's going to be a giant dragon on the screen. And I also forgot to mention that it's a 2D. So it's mm -hmm. the X-Men. So it's all sprite based. Um, we actually have working game uh, game to show, but uh, not as much. Yeah. No, that's it. Now, are there any questions? Yes. What age group is this? Um. Well, when I first thought about it, about 10, 10 plus. So pretty much kids in the fourth, fifth grade, sixth grade. Um. We're gonna add difficulties, so we're not gonna do like anything for high school stuff, but uh, long division along those lines, so it's going to probably go up to like junior high level. Yes? I don't need to cover Smash Wars or anything like that. What was that? Like a battle between like probably one math problem and another math problem. So like Math Wars implemented to the game or? Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. It's we just, just for like um, me learning. Th this is just like to have uh, kids, people in general, improve basic math skills. Oh. Because, um, I don't know, but I've seen people, like, high school level that need to pull out a calculator for 10 plus 12, yeah. And this would be aiming at helping improve uh, the general level. <laughs> what platform? Uh, it's going to be for PC on XNA, or developed in XNA. What about iPad on XNA? Uh, I don't know any coding for that sort of <laughs> thing. So, we yeah. we're, we're starting with PC for now. We're starting with PC for now, and then hopefully, probably with the Xbox, I mean, if it's possible. Maybe, that would be, be, that be much that's more like difficult way. because numbers right. and Xbox controller. <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah. you have to like, decide which number to click, and yeah. it's too late, and they hit you, and you lose. Which job would you connect? 72! Oh, <laughs> hey, there you go. someone to do backgrounds and user interface um, so we can draw attention to equations better uh, and actually have a background that tells story and location. And it's going to be sort of cartoony like that. Yeah, yeah cartoony. Um, I want to say it's like, think Maple Story, yeah. similar to Maple Story. Um, yeah, it's just going to be the player inputting numbers. The, <coughs> the main character will have the animation of always moving forward. 
So um, the player is not controlling the actual movement. It's just constantly moving, constantly moving, and enemies move towards the player. Uh, there will be like shooting animations and attack animations, etc. But nothing complicated like jumping. Okay. Good. Yeah. The main emphasis is for the players to build up the math skills, not where are they going to move. It's gonna it's gonna deviate from the whole concept of the entire game. So. so. Do you ever play Titan with your dad? Yes, that's yeah. kind of what <laughs> we were going along the lines. So yeah. similar to a lot of the old Pokemon games, Fire Emblem, Advanced Wars, if you're familiar with those, which I really hope any of you are. Um, then you'll know the kind of perspective I'm looking at. Um, it's a fairly pixelated art style, um, and mostly what we need is like animations for combat, because uh, we have like warriors, mages, and rogues moving around, just attacking each other, <coughs> casting spells, yada, yada, yada. Um, and we have a full framework set up for like screen wide animations, uh, similar to like fighting in Final Fantasy games on Game Boys, um, mm -hmm. where you have you know your your one character ah, does some weird animation, casts a spell, um, <laughs> takes takes up the whole screen, lightning bolts all over, yada yada yada, and uh, so so that comes up anytime combat's going on, and then there are also you know sprites moving around on your tiles um, as you take your turn. Um, that, that's pretty much all there is to say about it. I mean, there, there's a lot of programming knowledge that I won't bore you with because I need artists. Uh, so let me just uh, show you a prototype that we have working on the game. Before you start, you've got to get a projector on. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. I do that. Bring it up anyway. Since it's XNA, it needs the .NET framework installed on the computer um, <coughs> in order to run it. Uh, I, I didn't bring like the code for it, I just brought an executable. So I can't run it on here. What kind of computer should you bring? Huh? What kind of computer should you bring? Uh, I mean, any Windows computer will run it. Uh, it's just that I don't have install privileges and it needs to install the, the uh, .NET background. Okay, maybe you can do that in the end of the room. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Can't yeah, so anyone interested uh, can okay. come over and take a look. Um, it does. It's not set in stone because it was an a complete joke between me and my friend. It's just it's called default. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm very imaginative with that kind of thing. Anyone else? Yes. Well, I think you said it was. 
it's a turn-based strategy game. Yes. Are you are you going back? Are you trying to jump out of the what all the old ones used to do? I mean, now we saw the revival of XCOM just recently. You know, the the turn-based strategy game hasn't really seen a lot of light recently, except maybe on lighter platforms like iPhone and iPad. Right. Where are you where are you trying to tackle that? Um, really, I, I I'm not too worried about breaking molds or anything. I just want to make an interesting, fun game. Um, I, I I'm not concerned about winning. I mean, I'd love to see. I mean, I love XCOM, yeah. so I yeah. love, love turn-based strategy games. It just so, yeah. it seems so hard to get them out there, you know, get them playing. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, what I compare mine most to is probably Fire Emblem, just combat-wise. Um, yeah, it's the kind of game I like. Yes? Is this uh, a single-player story-driven type turn-based strategy, or is it just like um, Right now, the only mode we have implemented completely is uh, two people in a versus mode. Um, we're working on both networking for online modes, and also on a campaign mode so that we can have story, AI, you know, moving through the entire thing. But if anyone wants to write a story, that would be wonderful as well. Uh, I am a programmer designer. I have the imagination of uh, Christopher Powley when, when it comes to plot. <laughs> and it was so great. Yes? <laughs> I, I want entirely 2D, um, so like just you know pic pixelated sprites um, all on the tile grid. They're all 30 by 30, and then uh, like maybe 150 high pixels for like the close-ups of the characters. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't have to be pixel art. Just like the the kind of the kind of style I imagine it having is like those old Game Boy Advance games. But I'm completely open on that. Yes? Uh, I'm not really familiar. You said you would have a perspective similar to um, Fire Emblem and those games. You know, I'm not really familiar with those perspectives, but are you meaning like up and down, uh, um, right, uh, top down games or an isometric perspective? So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Characters facing towards the bottom of the screen, you see a full-on, um, you know, frontal of them. But like, as they're walking to the side and up, you just see the top of them or whatever. It, it's you know, not actually. It doesn't actually make physical sense the angles you see, but it looks good. It's like Dragon Warrior. Huh? Like Dragon Warrior. Yeah. Huh. Any more questions? All right. Thank you very much. So um, it'll be like a two-player game, which so far is what we're looking at. So you'll um, basically be competing against each other. You can have incomes as you increase when you send units, kind of like a, uh, a lot of the tower defense games, you find out like Warcraft 3, StarCraft, that kind of stuff. Um, power will be somewhat similar to Dota, where you'll have uh, three towers in each of the lines. You can upgrade them however you want. Um, you have more chain abilities and all that kind of stuff. So uh, right now, we don't have any... Uh, if you have any um, so basically, we don't really have a set up. We were trying to like throw something around at the beginning, but in the end we just thought it would like because there's been a lot of tower defenses like that range all kind of groups ranging from like um plants versus zombies where it's just like zombies trying to evade your lot or like 
more serious ones like Defense Grid, where I think it's like aliens trying to take the power orbs away from your like generator or something like that. Um, so themes can really vary, and we so that's the kind of nice thing about this project. If you we need two artists, by the way, maybe one or two around just to uh, help us with like the the sprite sprites and the backgrounds. Um, so that's kind of the nice thing about this project. That Similar. Um, the thing is, it's just a single length, at least for now. Maybe depending on how it goes, we may add more. But for now, it's just a single length. Units follow that, and you control the units that are sent. So instead of them being sent in waves, you will, I guess, like buy the units with your. With them. You're talking about like Warcraft Two, the two ball war. Yeah, something kind of like that. Or there's a lot of those. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Is that it? I don't do it, so I made it by myself, but I don't have 
make it more, uh, for now it's a Final Fantasy type of art, since I'm not an artist, I would like to make it more like a clean and modern look to actually match the actual gameplay itself. And what about the cutscenes? Cutscenes, um, I don't know how they want to do it. Right now I'm thinking about a whole single image with like a script, but I could easily change it to like something like a character song that actual feels moving around and talking to each other type of mm -hmm. cutscenes. Since I'm not using a game engine that I'm able to do anything I want. So that's almost free to you guys.